Kate, did you have your hand up again? Uh, I just was going to ask an entirely unrelated question. Good. I love unrelated questions. So, but something I've been debating about, how do you feel about creating characters who are vertically unlikable? Creating characters who are inherently unlikable. Um, there has to be a reason for them to be in the story. Uh, I mean, a, I want my villain to be the hero of his own story, and so he can't be completely unlikable because he has to like himself. Otherwise, you haven't created a villain, you've just created a monster. Um, you know, Smog is a good example of that. You know, oh, it's just a dragon. We just got to kill the dragon. How many lines does Smog really have? Well, I mean, he, he talks to, he does a little riddle thing with Bilbo, and then realizes, oh, I should go burn down Dale. Okay, he's just a monster. He's not the hero of his own story, he's just a monster. Um, characters who are unlikable, if they begin in an unlikable position and have an arc that takes them to a likable position, that's awesome. That's a fantastic challenge. And that's something that uh, we see that we see that a lot in, well, we just, we see that a lot. The first Iron Man movie, are we supposed to like Tony Stark at the beginning of Iron Man? No, he's a jerk. Well, I thought he was kind of awesome. Okay. <laughs> he was a jerk awesome, player. awesome, and jerk are not mutually exclusive. Okay? He gets to be a jerk. He gets away with being a jerk because he's awesome. By the end of the film, when he says, I am Iron Man, you get chills. Why? Because he's awesome and he's awesome. And he's, yeah, he's, he's, being, he's being honest. He's being, he's, he's owning up to stuff. That's, that's great. So when you talk about unlikable characters, um, yeah, I guess it depends on how unlikable. I mean, if I don't like any of the characters in your book, then, uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop reading, and, and maybe I'm not your target audience. I don't know. The Thomas Covenant series, which uh, we mentioned in the last Writing Excuses, uh, the protagonist is inherently unlikable. He's bitter, he's cruel, uh, he commits rape on his very first visit into the fantasy universe, and, uh, and you, we're not supposed to like him. Um, and yeah, he, he has an arc. He, ha he gets better. He doesn't get a lot better. We still despise him a little bit. He's not a hero, but he has to be heroic in order to solve the problem. And so it... Uh, it's a very different sort of novel. I hope that I, was, I could keep talking about unlikable characters because they're awesome. Other questions? I, is it 6:20? We're supposed to we're supposed to break at 6:10. I don't. Are you guys going to actually take a break? He lectures until 6:40. When do you guys need to start with your reading groups, your critique groups? When, when I'm done. How much time does it take you? Because 7:40. Is when they kick you out of the room. We have to go till six forty, and then we have till seven forty in writing groups. And All right, then we'll just keep the Q and A going as long as there's good questions. And once the questions start sucking, comic drop. What do you think about characters that are uh, maybe obviously just in there for humor, those flat and not so dynamic at all? Don't use them. I mean it. What do you think about characters who are only there to provide sex? Characters who are only there to provide action? Characters who are only there to provide a political statement? They shouldn't be in your book. Okay? Everything you spend words on should be something that has more than one purpose. The humorous character should have some sort of an arc, should help the plot move forward, forward, forward should help us define the other characters, all of these things have to be uh, have to be there. Um, otherwise, people will tell you your writing is two dimensional and they're cardboard cutout characters. And why is this person even in the book? What about R two D two and C three PO? Okay, so Star Wars question: R two D two and C three PO in Star Wars, we wouldn't have accepted it as a science fiction movie that broke new ground if we didn't have characters who were robots. So Lucas was breaking new ground by making characters robots. Okay? Um, that's reason number one why they're in the film. They could have been aliens, but I don't think that would have broken ground for us yet. Um, R2-D2 and C-3PO 
move the plot forward, offer comic relief, and help us define Luke's character and Ben's character and basically every character they come into contact with. It's almost as if in Star Wars, and this was uh, brilliance later unrealized, uh, it's almost as if we're seeing this whole human war through the eyes of the robots, which is fantastic and brilliant and awesome, um, and they totally belonged in that movie. From, he got that idea, though, from Akira Kurosawa uh, in Fortress, like telling the story kind of from the perspective of a true low character. When was the last time that I didn't steal an idea from somebody? No, I'm just okay. kidding. Yeah, that's... Ideas. I mean, maybe he, uh, it was unrealized in, in the, the episodes one through three. When I, yeah, when I say, when, yeah, when I say unrealized... Um, I think he knew what he was doing. <laughs> Yeah, no, he, he totally knew what he was doing. It's that uh, that promise was not kept throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the series. Meh. They are what they are. I don't feel, I don't feel betrayed. We got the very best thing that could happen is a Han Solo movie in which Han spends the whole movie shooting first. <laughs> that I would... I am in that. I am in that chair with uh, an extra large popcorn. <laughs> Other questions? Yes, sir. That's a great, no, no, that's a great question. I never start with, today's punchline is going to be comic drop, and I'm going to fire on cute and recognizable, and um, we'll use subversion, but we'll use subversion in panel one. No, that's not how I do it, ever. How I do it is I start having the characters write, or I start having the characters write. I start writing <laughs> character dialogue and imagining the pictures in my head and laying it out and thinking about where the plot's trying to go. And often I will get to the fourth panel and realize, that isn't funny. There's no room there for a joke. Someone could say something to change our perception of the line of dialogue that was delivered previously, but that's not a funny, funny enough joke for this panel. How important is the plot exposition here? Can I come at this from a different... Uh, from a different angle. Should these even be the characters who are on screen? Uh, roughly one strip out of three that I write, I will start with a group of characters and realize you guys don't have a joke to tell. And I can unfold the plot better with somebody else. And so I chuck that and I start writing with somebody else. Now understand, the first law of the Schlock Mercenary universe is that there must be a punchline. And I am writing funny often in ways that is slapstick funny or sitcom funny, not just character funny. I, I, I depend on character funny a lot, um, but there has to be a joke. I can't end with a panel that's, you know, just tune in tomorrow to see another picture of the spaceship. Um, although heaven knows I want to. Uh, and so... My advice to you in terms of Genesis, write the dialogue. Give yourself a goal. Give yourself a goal. By the end of this page, something funny will have happened. The end of this physical page and start writing dialogue. And you get to the bottom of the page, you realize nothing funny has happened. Well, why not? Well, because I never executed on any of these straight lines. Well, because I'm just doing exposition and there's nothing funny in the exposition. And sometimes, as you ask yourself that question, you'll say, oh, wait a minute, there is something funny about the exposition. If I tell this in this way, then suddenly that, uh, that anecdote from that character or that description from the narrator uh, becomes funny. Um, I would caution you, if the narrator is telling your jokes, you are writing comedy. If the characters are saying funny things from time to time, or are in situations that are funny from time to time, then you're just writing something that has humor in it. But if the narrator tells the jokes, 
you're writing comedy. Anybody read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Okay. Uh, one of my favorite examples in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The Vogon starships hung in space the way bricks don't. The narrator told a joke. All right. It's comedy. The narrator told a joke. Um, if uh, Arthur or Ford Prefect had commented on, you know, I can't see how those are flying. There's no jet exhaust. There's no wings. There's no, they fly like bricks don't. That could be a serious novel with a character in it who sometimes says goofy stuff. So I hope that helps.